Hi, um, this lady normally does, uh, dreams or whatever. I don't really care about dreams, but how would she, she know? <coughs> Excuse me, just sorry about that. How would she know what's coming to America when America's not even mentioned in the Bible? We'll just play with what, what she says. Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I wanted to come out today and just share with you a couple things. I was given last night in a dream and in a vision um, a word. And I believe that these words speak to uh, a judgment. Okay, I believe these are warnings. So in the dream I was given, um, I was looking out this window and I, as I was looking out the window, I see this wind begin to blow through and it is a mighty wind. And I'm watching this one particular tree and it just starts to bow over. I mean, it's just like way over. And I'm just amazed as I'm watching this. And then suddenly the snow just starts to pour down from the sky and it's covering the ground immediately. Our Lord Jesus, and it's salvation. like within minutes. So, Melissa, you were not trusting in the Lord's shed blood. Right? Um. So... So, so you're trusting in your own prayer for salvation. And how would I know that the Lord told you about judgment coming for America? There were inches of snow on the ground. So this was something that happened really fast. Okay. And as I was contemplating what the dream means, I believe the Lord's showing me Okay, a window, I believe, is symbolic of, of uh, something to come, a vision of the future. And uh, the wind, I believe, is symbolic of Holy Spirit. The tree, I believe, symbolizes America. Trees are symbolic of peoples. And I believe the Lord is showing us he's about to send a judgment to humble America. That tree was just bowing way over, all right? And... Um, the snow is symbolic of cleansing. So I believe the purpose of this judgment is intended to cleanse this nation, all right, of the sin, the, the many sins that are in her, and bring her to repentance, all right? Bring her to repentance for these sins. And, uh, and then, okay, so this morning, as I was laying there just thinking about these things, I had this vision, and I see a television. And in, in this vision, I just knew, like, a show was about to begin. And I see these words come across the television screen. It is ready. It is ready. So I believe that word is just a confirmation. Of Welcome. My name is Robert. That this judgment is ready to unfold. And um, I don't know if you listen to Tony Lamb. He's a brother in Christ. who has a YouTube channel. About a week ago, uh, he was given a dream or a vision where he was shown America is about to enter into judgment. It was a very sobering word. I encourage you to go to his channel, just Tony Lamb, and, and listen to his last video. And uh, Katie did. Uh, she also, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, was shown something regarding a judgment coming. So I just believe the Lord is warning us uh, that this is coming. And uh, I just encourage you, church, to be praying uh, praying for lost family members, um, friends. It sounds to me you're lost. It sounds to me you, Melissa, are lost because you are um, relying of, of yourself, your prayer. You're not trusting in the blood. The Lord only wants... Uh, wants um, is interested in, in the shedding of blood. Like blood sacrifice in the old days, and then and then trusting in the Lord's uh, blood. Right. Okay, M M M Melissa, this is for you. For 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 you, I mean, um, you can re read this. For all who've sinned,
through faith in his blood. Is believing, putting your trust in the Lord's shed blood. Right? I just want to... Uh, um, co-workers, uh, you know, we're not guaranteed tomorrow. We know that uh, the church will be taken out, all right? Uh, um, you might not even be part of the church, right? You're not even, uh, if you're not trusting in the blood, I don't think you're part of the church, part of the bride. But we don't know that we're promised tomorrow. And it's just like when I was talking to my son last night, I said, um, you know, all that really matters is that at any given moment, we're ready to go out into eternity, that we know the Lord Jesus Christ. And, um... And that's what I um, encourage you, Lordship to Salvationist, with your friends, uh, to just make that decision to to come into that relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you don't know Him as your Lord and Savior, I encourage you to read the. I've read the information and I've prayed and asked Jesus into my life for so many years, and still doubt came into to my mind. Um, now now after trusting in the blood. Oh, I'm fine. I'm trusting in the Lord's blood, his whole finished work. You you are trusting in a bloodless gospel. Information I provided below uh, that will tell you biblically how to come into a relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ, how to make him your Lord and Savior, and to be reconciled to the Father, Father God, through Jesus Christ. Um, it is his desire that each one of us come to know him in a very personal, real way. And, uh, and I provided a prayer if, you know, and when you make that decision that you want the to pray know him doesn't, as your Lord and Savior, the prayer doesn't uh, save you. you. Prayer, uh, and, um, you know, it's not the words that save you. Uh, it's that condition of your heart. But I If the rapture was to come today, I wonder... It would be interesting to see uh, uh, whether you were le left behind. I believe it's all about the blood. So I believe most likely you would be le left behind. You to, to really um, soberly think about that now because we just we don't have a lot of time. The things going on in Israel right now, uh, Iran and Israel back and forth, uh, ever since Trump came out of that uh, Iran deal, all these things, I believe, are leading up to these prophetic wars, all right, that point to the time of Jacob's trouble beginning, uh, the time God will deal with his people Israel. And, um, and we know that the church will not be here for Jacob's trouble. So all those things, I believe, are what Jesus was referring to when he said, you know, when you see all these things happening, look up, for your redemption is drawing near. I encourage you, church, Keep right. looking up our redemption. Now, Robert Breaker on how to get saved. Robert Breaker here. I'm a missionary evangelist to the Spanish-speaking people. And today I want to tell you how to be saved and know it and go to heaven. I'll give you a little uh, scripture here on how to go to heaven, how to know you have eternal life and go to heaven. There's a lot of people out there that claim to have the gospel and claim to be able to tell you that they can get you to heaven. But uh, a lot of people that claim to know how to get to heaven, doubt whether or not they're even going there. There's a lot of people who say, oh yeah, yeah, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, but you know, I, I'm not sure if I'm going to heaven. Well, you know, the Bible says you can know that you have eternal life. The Bible says that you can know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you're on your way to heaven. So what is it you need to know to get to heaven? How, how do you get there? Well, let's start in with the gospel. What is the gospel? I got my Bible here. And I'd like to show you what the gospel is. You know, you hear a lot of talk nowadays about the gospel this, the gospel that. Uh, TV shows, even popular news shows talk about the gospel. But no one defines the gospel. Nobody tells you what the gospel is. I want you to look here with me in 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verses 1 through 4 because this explains it very well. Here we read, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, wherein you have received, and wherein you stand. So you are about to re read what the gospel is. By which also you are saved. Saved from what? Saved from hell. 
If you preach the manner that I believe in you, unless you believe in vain. For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. So here we see the Gospel in the Bible. And the Gospel is that Christ died for our sins, was buried and rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross. Here's a little Gospel track that uh, we like to hand out to people that says, All this I did for thee. It shows Jesus Christ on the cross. And that pretty much sums it up real well. What did he do? He died on the cross in your place for your sins. You say, well, I'm not a sinner. Well, then you just told a lie. Because the Bible tells us that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Here in Romans chapter 3, the Bible tells us that everyone's a sinner. No one can deny that they have sinned in their life. And as a matter of fact, in this verse right here, verse 24, or excuse me, 23, we read, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And up here in verse 10, it is written, There is none righteous, no, not one. All have sinned. Everyone in this world today is a sinner. The only person that ever lived without sin was Jesus Christ, the sinless substitute who died on the cross in our place for our sins. Now, what does the Bible say? Since we've sinned, how do we get to heaven? How can we get there? God won't allow any sin into heaven. So how do we get to heaven? Because we're sinners. What can we do? Well, the Bible tells us that the way to heaven is not through works. You see, every religion on earth all try to tell you that you get to heaven by something you do. Whether it's do these rituals or do these rites or pray enough or try to do good works. But what does the Bible say? to be saved. Here's Ephesians chapter 2, verses 8 and 9. And in these passages, we read, starting verse 8, For by grace are you saved through faith, faith. and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. You cannot get to heaven by your good works, yep. because those are good works that were done by a sinner. And God... See... To this lady is not a gift because we're asking, we're begging God for salvation, right? It's of our own, our own self, right? We're, 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 we're meant to trust the blood. Won't accept those works done by a sinner. You can never do good works enough to get to heaven. It's a gift. Salvation is a gift of yep. eternal life from Jesus Christ. Romans cha chapter 6 tells us in verse uh, 23, we read these words. 6.23, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. The wages of sin is death. Every man, woman, and child on the face of this earth is going to die someday. Why do we die? We die because of our sin. We're all sinners. And what happens after death? Well, a lot of people don't like to think, to think about it, but the truth is, according to the Scriptures, the Word of God, when you die without Jesus Christ and without having your sins forgiven, you go directly to hell to burn for all eternity and paying for your sins. And that, and that horrible flame, that horrible fire, burning for all eternity. And what sin is it? It's the sin of not receiving that free gift of Jesus Christ that puts you in hell. You see, Jesus suffered and bled and died on the cross. Who killed Jesus? We did. Why did Jesus die? Did you ever stop to think why he died? Well, we just read that he died for your sins, and the truth of the matter is, the person who killed Jesus was you. Because your sins put him on the cross. He died in your place for your sins. So you're guilty of his death. You're a murderer. You murdered Jesus Christ. Now, the question is, what will you do with Jesus? Will you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior? Will you trust what He's done is sufficient to, as a gift of forgiveness of sins? Or will you reject Jesus Christ? It's your decision what you do with Jesus Christ. Now, I'd like to show you some more verses. In 1 Peter chapter 3 and verse 18, the, the Scriptures tell us this. And I'm using the King James 1611 authorized version. In 1 Peter 3.18... We read, For Christ hath also once suffered for sins, the just for the unjust, that he might bring us to God. So who died for sins? Jesus Christ. Who's the just? Jesus. Who's the unjust? We, we are. are. We are sinners. 
And what was it for? That he might bring us to God. Yep. Jesus Christ died on the cross, shed his blood for our sins, that we might go to heaven through him and through his sacrifice. So how do you get to heaven? How do you get saved according to the Bible? Well, the Bible tells us it's by faith. For by grace you say through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works. Lest any man should boast. We've read those, those passages. So the question then is faith in what? What do you need to trust in to be saved and have your sins forgiven? Well, let's look again here. And I will start in Romans chapter 3 and verse 23, where we've just looked about being a sinner. And if you don't think you're a sinner, then I've got bad news for you. You can't be saved. Exactly. Because Jesus came to save sinners, the Bible says. Exactly. And here in verse 23, we read, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. But the Bible says being justified freely by His grace through the redemption that is in Jesus Christ. You can have your sins redeemed through Jesus Christ. And verse 25 tells us, Whom God has set forth to be a propitiation, speaking of Jesus Christ, through faith in His blood. To declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness, that he, Jesus, might be the just, the just dying for the unjust, and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus. Yep. Where is boasting then? Can we boast and say, Well, I'm saved because I did all these good works? No. It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. Therefore we conclude that a man is justified by faith without the deeds of the law. Salvation or justification, forgiveness of sins, is by faith, not by the works of the law. Faith in what? Through faith, faith, faith in his blood. Jesus Christ was the blood atonement. So, so, M M Melissa, are, are you are you trusting in 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 the shed blood? The Lord shed blood. The Lord Jesus has shed blood. On your information, nothing about the blood, right? So, so you were preaching a, a bloodless gospel, right? I I believe you're believing in vain. He died on the cross of Calvary in your place. God demands blood for sin. The yep. Old Testament, they had to sacrifice uh, lambs and goats and bulls for sin. God said, I will only forgive sin based upon blood that's been shed. And behold, Jesus Christ came to this world, and John the Baptist said, Behold the Lamb of God which taketh away the sin of the world. How did he take that sin away? When they put him on that yep. cross and crucified him, he shed every, every drop, drop of his blood, blood. Yep. as a forgiveness of sins. And he says, Anyone who come to him and trust that atonement Trust what he did as sufficient, yep. he will give them eternal life through faith in their blood. Yep. If, faith in his blood. If you will trust his blood, you'll have eternal life. Yay. The Bible clearly proves this and proves teaches this. This is Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 7. Look at verse 7 here. It says, speaking of Jesus, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins, according to the riches of his grace. Forgiveness of sins... All sins, past, present, or future, is only through His blood. And salvation is by faith, and that faith... See, if someone could be saved by asking Jesus into their life, then they've earned salvation because of their prayer. They're asking. So you're preaching a false gospel. So I believe, Melissa, if the rapture was to happen today, right, you would be left behind. Because... Because because you're not trusting in the shed blood, the Lord's shed blood. It's simple. I am trusting in Jesus' shed blood. It's that simple. And, and I thank the Lord Jesus and I thank Robert Breaker for teaching me about the blood. For Rob T and 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 the Lord as well. I thank the Lord, the Lord Jesus, and it's all about His shed blood must be in the blood of Jesus Christ. Are you saved? The old song says, Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? Have you been to Jesus for the cleansing power? Are you washed in the blood of the Lamb? The shed blood of Jesus Christ is the only way to heaven. If you will accept Jesus as your Savior today, trusting in His shed blood as yep. sufficient it is to give you sufficient. eternal life, 
as sufficient to wash all your sins away, yep. as sufficient to get you to heaven, then I've got good news for you. You'll be born again and on your way to heaven. But if you look at that and say, well, yeah, yeah, I've heard that my whole life, and that's no big deal, you're not believing in it. You're believing up here, but not down here. The Bible says, if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart, thou shalt be saved. It's a heart belief. It's trusting with all that you are that what he did on the cross. Plus, I don't go by dreams. I go what the Bible says. And you, uh, lady, are teaching a false gospel. Will give you eternal life and forgiveness of sins. Many people know it up here. They don't believe in it down here. You see, the confession isn't what saves you. It's the belief in the heart. Yep. So if you're not saved and you want to be saved and you don't want to go to hell, why don't you just bow your head and close your eyes and just go to the Lord and tell him that what you've heard from the scripture today is true because the Bible says it is. Yep. And why don't you say, I, I accept what you've done for me. I rely upon that finished work. Yep. I trust That's your blood, blood to save my soul. Yep. See, the prayer isn't what saves you. It's whether or not your faith is in the shed blood yep. of Jesus Christ. If your faith is not in that blood, then you're not saved. If yep. your faith is in that blood, then you're on your way to heaven. You're a born again child. So it looks like, in, uh, from what I know, that you're not saved, M Melissa, and, and you're leading t so many people, what, t 20K subscribers, so you could, and I'm one of them, but I subscribe, but I'm trusting in the blood. So I'm not sure how many of those 20,000 uh, subscribers of yours are trusting in, in, in the Lord's shed blood. But I know f at this point, I don't think you're um, trusting in the Lord's shed blood, right? So so you're not even part of the body of Christ, in my view. Child of God. I'd like to give my testimony on another one of these YouTube videos, how I personally was saved. And maybe we'll get a chance to do that. But until then, I just want people to know what the Bible teaches about how to be born again. It's not of any work you do. It's not going to church. It's not getting baptized. It's not performing rituals. It's not repetitious prayers. It's not confessing your sins to anyone. It's what you do with him. Yep. And what That's he's right, done Rob. for you. Jesus said, all this I did for thee. If you can get to heaven by your works, then why did Jesus die? Have you ever thought about that? Why did he suffer and bleed and die on the cross of Calvary if it's possible to get to heaven by something you do? If it's what you do, then all he did is in vain. Yep. But if it's what he did, then you need to accept by I faith, accept. trusting in that blood that he yep. shed on the cross, that all he did for you was sufficient to give you eternal Yay. life. Only Jesus saves. Salvation is through eternal life through Jesus Christ. If you'd like more information on how to be saved, please go to my website, rrb3.com. Find more information. You can click into the website, and somewhere in there is a place to click on about salvation and the gospel and how to be saved. We want to see you on, on your way to heaven. We want to see you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that you have eternal life and that you're on your way to heaven. Jesus saves. Right. Now, 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 Melissa, we're going to go um, a small part of um, Rob's video on Billy Graham, a Lordship Salvationist. Right, let's see. Believe in the resurrection of Jesus and the coming judgment of God, and so do I. We only differ on some small matters of church tradition. No, no, no. We, we, we differ on the matter of salvation. Yep. They believe it's faith and works. Salvation says it's by faith alone. He's a faith so alone. many things that this man has changed on that makes you wonder. This is even weird to me. Did you know Billy Graham has a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame? <laughs> I thought that was only reserved for actors from Hollywood. I think it's quite interesting that Billy Graham got his start in a crusade in Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Well, that's where Hollywood is. Check this out. The star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. Hollywood has been the foundation of the filthy motion picture industry. On October 14, 1989, our local newspaper, the News Herald, carried the following story. 
The world's best known evangelist tomorrow will have his name in the likeness of an old-fashioned radio microphone engraved on the 1900, uh, what does it say, 19th hundredth star along the Hollywood Walk of Fame. The world's best known evangelist is going to have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame. You know what? I don't want that. I don't want the praise of man. I don't want to be on the same place where all these whores and whoremonger Hollywood actors were. I tell you, if when Robert Breaker dies, and, I, and I'm praying the rapture comes first, but when Robert Breaker, Breaker dies, if they start praising Robert Breaker and they put a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, would you do me a favor? Would you go out there with a uh, gigantic sledgehammer and break it up? I would be ashamed as a true Christian. To have a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame with all those wicked, filthy, ungodly, reprobate people. That would be... I just wouldn't want that. Please do me a favor and break that up. Anyway, Billy Graham wins praise of Catholic. Oakland Bishop Floyd begins chats with Billy Graham. Well, here's a Catholic man. And Billy Graham joined up with the Catholics. It says here, a Jesuit, pr a Jesuit? A Jesuit priest has published a book in which he commends evangelist Billy Graham for his methods and message, but most especially for his uncompromising ministry of inducing people to make a commitment to Christ. Um, the title of the book is W.F. W.F. Graham's Decisions for Christ to Study on Conversion. So Billy Graham is hooking up with the Catholic Church and getting friends with Jesuits. Have you ever read the Jesuit Oath? Jesuit Oath is evil. I don't have time to read it here. So that's about it. That's about all I have to say about Billy Graham. Now, there were some things about Billy Graham. When he started in his early ministry, he did go to 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I've had people email me and say, Brother Frank, I was watching YouTube and I found an old Billy Graham. And boy, he sounded just like you. He was preaching 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. I said, praise God. So I see that there were people that did get saved from early Billy Graham, about 1950s, even 40s. But as Billy Graham continued, he began to compromise and change what he used to preach. Somebody told me in 1960s, there was a man named Billy Bright. And Billy Graham and Billy Bright worked together, and they have this gospel track that they came out with. And this gospel track came out, <clears throat> and I think it was called Four Spiritual Laws or something like that. And a lot of people ask the question, where does the sinner's prayer come from? Now, I don't know who started it, but I know it was very, very much pushed by Billy Graham, the sinner's prayer. And this Bill Bright, there was a prayer called the Center Prayer on the end of that track. I didn't have a copy of it somewhere, but I don't know where my copy of my tracks are. I couldn't find it. So what I see through Billy Graham's ministry is that he started his ministry by preaching the gospel of 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. But as he joined up with these other so-called Christians, which were apostate Christians, he began to tell people, now if you want to get saved, repeat this prayer. So he went from salvation by trying to preach to you and you believing from the heart, because of his compromise, he was only interested in your head. And he told you, now if you want to be saved, now just repeat after me. This is Mr. Billy Graham giving his last message to America. And this is what he says. I want you to listen. He tells you, you want to get saved, repeat these words. Repeat this prayer after me. You tell me if you can get saved. And, and just notice how much good and bad are mixed together. Because in a nutshell, that is Billy Graham. He took the good and the bad and mixed them together. And that, my friend, is called apostasy. Apostasy is falling away from the truth and or mixing it with false. So let's listen to Billy Graham's last message. Today, I'm asking you to put your trust in Christ. All right, that's salvation. We Yay. trust. We put our trust in Christ. Okay, that's all you have to say. Trust the blood. But he never says trust the blood. He just says trust Christ. Okay, now let's continue. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. I'm going to ask you to pray this prayer. Okay, uh, so now we're going to pray. What if um, what if I'm a lost person and I don't want to get saved? You ever think of that? Why not tell me if you love if you want to be saved, come to Jesus by faith from the heart. Listen to what he says. Sentence by sentence after me. Pray sentence by sentence after him. Okay. Dear Heavenly Father, I know that I'm a sinner. That's good. And I ask for your forgiveness. Uh-oh. We're in the Bible where we're told to ask God to forgive us. We're told no when we trust the blood atonement, that's when he forgives us. Yep. Have you ever thought about asking God to forgive you? It's basically asking God to die on the cross all over again. He can't and he won't. He only died once. 
and he, well, he died that one time to forgive us. There's one sacrifice for all. Why would you ask God to forgive you when you receive the forgiveness that God offers by faith? So we had a problem with that part. I believe you died for my sins. Well, that's good. I believe you died for my sins. And rose from the dead. Amen. That's part of the gospel. I turned for my sins. Okay, now that sounds almost like works a little bit, but okay, let's keep listening. I repent of my sins. Okay, what do you mean by repent? A lot of people don't define repent. Repent means change your mind or feel sorry for something. Is he saying, I feel sorry for my sin? Okay. I invite you to come into my heart and life. I invite you to come into my heart and life. Do you know that those those things aren't in the Bible? Nowhere in the Bible does it say, now invite Jesus to come into your heart. Or invite Jesus to come into your life. That's not there. That's a bloodless gospel. No, the Bible says in Galatians that Jesus dwells in our heart by faith. So the emphasis should be in faith in the blood. Yep. Is there that emphasis there? <laughs> uh, actually, no, because you remember the Billy Graham Association says uh, Billy Graham does not put emphasis on the blood. Graham believes they were saved by the blood of Christ. However, in this aspect of Christian doctrine, he does not emphasize in his message. Well, then that's not a very good evangelist if he's exactly not emphasizing right. the blood of Christ. Hmm. I want to trust and follow you. Listen to what he just said. I want to trust, trust. and follow you. I trust. Just because you want that doesn't mean you're saved. It's when you trust. If you think a guy gets saved because he tells God, God, I want to trust you. Thank you. Amen. No, it's when you trust, not the fact that you want to. As my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, Amen. He's alive! So that's Billy Graham's last word and testament on how to be saved. I didn't hear the gospel one time. I didn't hear the blood one time. I heard him say, go to God and tell God that you want to be saved. Whereas, Lord, I trust and receive you as my Savior. I trust in your blood atonement for salvation. I didn't hear. What if I said, I want to pay my bills? Are my bills paid because I wanted no. to pay them? No, not until they're paid are they paid. It's not the want that saves you. It's, it's when you trust, trust from the heart. So there are a lot of things about Billy Graham. I, I believe I've done my best to talk about the man and explain to you who he was. The world... So, so you're not trusting in Jesus' shed blood. So really, you're not even saved, in my view. As far as I know, if you not trusting in the Lord shed blood, you're not saved. The world worships the man as the greatest evangelist that ever lives. And there's a lot of YouTube videos that I think are quite interesting. Many people are saying that, that God told them, and, and I'm very leery of that, I'm very leery of people who say, God told me this or God told me that. No, no, you got to go by the Bible, not by what some guy says. But there are many people all over the Internet saying, God told them that, that when Billy Graham dies, that will be the sign that Jesus Christ is coming back at the rapture of that year. Well, I hope so. I, I don't know. <laughs> it would be nice. But a lot of people say that Billy Graham was this great evangelist. And if you want to believe that, that's fine. If you want to remember early Billy. But later Billy says hell is not a literal fire. Later Billy says that the three people or groups that he looked at as the greatest enemy of Christ were the three groups that he shacked up with and said he believed in. Later Billy stopped preaching the blood of Christ. Later Billy joined up with the World Council of Churches. And later Billy went into apostasy. And many Christians look at him and I quote, Many fundamentalists still regard Billy Graham as the greatest disappointment in the history of the Christian church. So how do you view Billy Graham? You know, really, it doesn't matter. I told you that I was making this video as an edifying yep. thing. I want to edify. And I think that the life of Billy Graham, the thing that we should get from it, that the edification that we should get from his life, is let's don't compromise. Yep. Let That's Anyone? Let's don't hook up with the heathen in order to try to get the gospel out. And let's don't forget the blood of Jesus yep. Christ. Let's do what he forgot to do. Let's emphasize the blood. Let's yep. tell people that they're saved by the blood of Christ. Let's tell people the gospel. Not just say, hey, I preach the 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4, to 4, 
uh, the King James v v version because I, I don't like the other v v v versions. Uh, yeah, um, that is the gospel. And plus, this is part of it, and it's all about his shed blood. Faith in his blood, yep. Gospel. But well, let's tell the gospel. The gospel is 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4. The gospel is how that Christ died for our sins. How did he die? He shed his blood for our sins. So take the life of Billy Graham. If you want to enjoy some of his old stuff and look at his old, old, old stuff, you can help yourself. But I see Billy Graham as a man who went out of his way to not say certain things as not to offend people, as he tried to join people together. But we can't join with others who don't have their doctrine or their foundation yep. right. We can only join together on the doctrine of salvation. And we must believe that it's by grace through faith in the blood of Christ without works. Yep. Are you saved? Do you trust the blood? Yeah, I trust the blood, mate. And it's all got it. Yep, I showed you. Use. Uh, yes, yeah, so, so that, that'll do for t t today. Th th thank you.